12 ways the Biden and the Democrats are protecting the environment. This is part of the, uh, the good news roundup over on dailycoast.com. And uh, it's a great read. And I'll just, I'll summarize it for you. Number one, Biden rejoined the Paris Climate Accords. This is a huge deal. I mean, Donald Trump pulled us out of the Paris Cl Accords because he and the Republican Party were taking, uh, you know, I, I don't know specifically how much he took, but the Republican Party in general had been taking literally hundreds of millions, perhaps billions of dollars over the years from the fossil fuel industry, from fossil fuel billionaires, and from foundations and groups aligned with uh, both. And, you know, they wanted to get us out of the Paris Climate Accords because they wanted to be able to continue to pollute with impunity and in the process make as much profit as possible. And Biden said, no, we're going to rejoin the Paris Accords. Number two, Biden expanded wind farms. This is, uh, this is great. The Departments of Interior, Energy, and Commerce are all working together to, uh, to uh, increase our offshore wind energy capacity, which, by the way, is some of the most reliable wind out there. And uh, they, uh, again, this is from uh, Two Thanks on, on Daily Co's. Um, the, the Departments of Energy, Inter Interior, and Commerce committed to a shared goal of generating 30 gigawatts, 30 billion watts of offshore wind in the U.S. by 2030. The Interior Department estimates that reaching that goal would create nearly 80,000 jobs. Of course, it is still being blocked by, or, I mean, this was an effort that they took that they didn't need Congress for, so they succeeded. But any effort by Congress to do something like this would be blocked by Republicans who are in the deep, deep pockets of the fossil fuel industry. Number three, Biden and the Democrats made the largest investment in railroads since Amtrak was created. That's a good thing. Number four, Biden revoked the Keystone XL pipeline permit. Again, this has nothing to do with the price of gas in the United States. The, this coal slurry uh, that, that runs through that pipeline is not made into gasoline. It's made into heavier things like diesel fuel and, and uh, you know, other kinds of oils, you know, uh, like that. And it's for export. They're trying to ship this stuff from Canada down to the Gulf Coast, not because there's a huge demand for this thing in Texas and Louisiana, but because that's where there's a port and they can put it on ships and ship it out of the United States. So we refine it. We get the pollution, which is why you've got Cancer Alley from, from East Texas all the way through Louisiana, you know, all the way downwind from these refineries. We get the pollution. The people who own the refineries, and it used to be the Koch brothers, I don't know if it still is, but the people who own the refineries get the profits and other countries get the oil. And Biden said, no, this is stupid, and it was. So good on him for that. Number, f number five, Biden protected endangered species. He reversed two Trump-era rules that, that ended defense of endangered species in the United States. That's a big deal. Number, f number six, he increased the use of renewable energy. This was by executive order. Under an executive order, the federal government would phase out the purchase of gasoline-powered vehicles and federal government buildings, which are not inconsequential. There's a lot of them. Federal government buildings would be powered by wind, solar, or other clean energy. Number seven, Biden is cleaning up long ignored toxic sites. Now, you'll recall, I believe it was during the Nixon administration. It might have been after that. It was after the Love Canal thing melted down. And frankly, I don't remember what year it was. Um, but it was in that neighborhood of the 70s to the 80s. Uh, we started this fund the Superfund cleanup that was funded, uh, originally the Superfund cleanup projects were funded by the polluters themselves. So if you're a chemical company and you're, and you're gonna pollute, you know, you're gonna have a, a toxic landfill, you have to pay in advance for the cost of cleaning that thing up. Well, that got done away with by one of the Republican administrations. And as a consequence of that, companies had just been walking away from their toxic landfills. And the federal government picked, picked up that slack with, with a uh, super fund, uh, fund of its own, but it has been cut dramatically. It was cut dramatically during the Bush and Trump administrations. So Biden has reversed that. He signed legislation reviving a polluter's tax, and he's expected to raise, four, which is expected to raise 14 and a half billion in revenue over the next 10 years, and would accelerate the cleanup of these Superfund sites. The Superfund list, by the way, includes more than 1,300 abandoned mines, radioactive landfills, shuttled, shuttered, shuttered military labs, closed factories, and other contaminated areas across all 50 states, every single one of which was a major contributor to the profits of their owners at the time 
and every single one of which is now being paid for, the cleanup is being paid for by you and me. This is how capitalism works in America, when capitalists can buy the votes of legislators. Number eight, Biden has halted federal aid to new fossil fuel projects overseas. And this is, this, uh, you know, another, another big deal. For the first time, it bars the U.S. government from backing future ventures. Number nine, Biden protected trees. Remember uh, Bush's Healthy Forest Initiative that uh, allowed for clear-cutting of forests? <laughs> the outgoing uh, Trump administration slashed federal protection for Alaska's Songus uh, National Forest, the world's largest intact temperate rainforest. Biden reversed these policies. Oh, and they also stopped protecting more than 3 million acres here in the Pacific Northwest of uh, habitat for the spotted owl. And Biden reversed those policies and multiple other anti-environmental policies of the Trump administration after taking office. Number 10, Biden reduced climate emissions from cars. He wasn't able to get this through Congress. You know, uh, Joe Manchin, uh, Mr. I'll take money from the fossil fuel and to hell with my children and grandchildren's future, uh, you know, blew this up. But uh, Biden was able to do uh, an EPA rule to cut climate pollutions from new cars and light trucks. And finally, well, not finally, number 11, Biden protected 3 million acres of land, some of our most precious land, the Bears Ears uh, National Park and the uh, 1.87 million acre Grand Staircase Escalante Monument. He also reimposed fishing restrictions in the Northeast Canyons and the, uh, and the Seamounts National Marine Monument off the Atlantic that Trump had opened to commercial fishing. And finally, number 12, Biden is making light bulbs more efficient. And I think this is a particularly important deal because if you buy an electric car, the amount of electricity that your car is going to draw off your house and thus off the power grid, you know, electric cars typically charge at the, at the rate of about, you know, 13, 1400 watts, uh, you know, drawing electricity, about the same as an electric toaster. Well, if, you know, if you've got 100 watt light bulbs and you replace 10 of them with, you know, three, four watt LED bulbs, you have just freed up enough electricity to charge your car and not change your electric bills and not increase your demand on the grid. So this is a big deal. And the Department of Energy has proposed a requirement that everyday light bulbs meet a fuel efficiency standard, which is easily achieved with today's LEDs. Uh, this was uh, supposed to take effect in the last year of the Trump administration, but Trump set that aside. Um, right now, using old light bulbs costs consumers $300 million a year in needless energy bills and causes 800,000 tons of CO2 emissions into the atmosphere, which are absolutely unnecessary because these new LED lights are so much more efficient. So a lot going on there that you know we can deal with we can do we can do things about and, and the biden administration some really consequential improvements in our environment it's so easy to forget what is actually being done but this administration has done a lot this year and or this this term and there's more to come it's a good thing <laughs>